Big props to Nintendo for continuing to bring big updates to Super Mario Maker. Of course it still has its issues. Please Nintendo, we need an in-game search or filter function. Come on Reggie, help a brother out. But the last few months have seen a wide variety of updates. From fire shooting clown cars to make shoot 'em ups possible, to tiered power-ups depending on Mario's current state, to most important, checkpoints. 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 I know there are checkpoints now for the love. You know what? In case they add an update later that does give us in-game level searching, I'm going to say it as plain as possible right now. I made this video before that update. <clears throat> Sorry. But it seems like Nintendo is listening to our gripes and doing their best to provide us with more tools as we go to build some of the most creative levels in Mario history. That's why today I wanted to show off 10 levels that I felt have really good design, most of which people have sent me in comments on the last video. Hopefully this will encourage you to think outside the box and build unique stages, and maybe spark some ideas for you in the future. Let's dive in. Spiny Course by Coxworthy you're going to notice that a lot of these levels incorporate principles that I thought were important from my first Mario Maker video, which you should check out here by the way, but this level is no exception. Right off the bat, it's teaching you a main mechanic before you even dive into the level, to make sure you know how to spin jump off spinies. It tells you the button to press, you have to spin jump to break these blocks and proceed, and there's spinies waiting for you at the bottom, teaching you your new ability. From there, it slowly introduces new concepts related to the same theme of bouncing off of spinies. You have to jump across the spiky floor with them, then here you have to let go of the jump button to make sure you don't hit the spikes above your head, adding some good variants. It's short and sweet, but it finishes strong, never losing the fun. Way of the Wiggler by Brian Wallace this was one of the first levels I ever played in Mario Maker, and it showed me some of the really cool stuff you could create in this game. The entire level deals with Wigglers moving on a track, and it perfectly builds until the end. It starts by introducing you to the concept in a safe environment. If you fall off, you can get right back up. Then it adds some more Wigglers, makes you clear big gaps, and like the last level, adds this part with the saw where you can't hold jump, otherwise you'll get hurt. I like that once a Wiggler is jumped on, he gets mad and speeds up, so you have to think on your feet if you dilly-dally because the cycles will be different. It ends with a choice, regular exit or extra challenge. If you decide to take the harder path, you're given the reward of satisfaction, knowing you bested these stupid wigglers. Look at that stupid face. Stupid. Don't get crushed by Ted Wan. This one had some really unique mechanics and makes you think fast right from the get-go. A giant wall is chasing toward you and you need to get to the end of this maze before you get squished. I like that from up here, you don't actually have to time your jump. The wall will just push you off nicely onto the next platform. From there, the wall actually splits apart and you have to jump your way to the next section, but coins are guiding you to do so. Now it's vertical climbing of the same mechanic, expanding on the original idea. Next, you can use this shell to bounce off this spring and create a vine. But if you miss, no big deal, you also have a cape so you can float down and reach the vines below. This section is really hard, maybe a bit too hard. It's really easy to get crunched here, but it tops off nicely with a creative boss fight, where you have to get the Magic Koopa to destroy blocks and reach your goal. DKC Jungle Hijinks by Renee. Oh, you know I had to throw this one in here for that DK2 Sunday's hype! You know what I'm talking about. Okay, maybe you don't. But this is a recreation of the first stage in Donkey Kong Country, but with Mario assets, and I love the creativity of it. It starts by shooting you out of your treehouse, and the whole stage is littered with trees to climb, just like the original. The Naughties are replaced with Goombas, the Kremlings with Koopas, and the Clumps with giant Goombas. And I guess this is the Neki throwing stuff at you? Eventually you get Yoshi, which represents Rambi, but instead of breaking the wall with your horn, Yoshi has to eat the piranha plants to reach the hidden secret. The attention to detail detail here is just perfect, and it really made me happy to see two different Nintendo mascots being melded into one. Mario's Adventure by Jim this is a great example of a real Mario stage kind of level. The game feel of the original Mario 3 is very apparent. It starts with some simple puzzles that are designed in a way to tell you what to do without saying anything. I'd find myself cut off from progressing due to new hazards, which caused me to explore and look around for the solution. But the answer was never confusing or very far away. It felt satisfying when you solved it and it added new elements all the time, like the Goomba shoe and Pow Block. The beauty is in the details though, like how you can use items as shortcuts if you figure it out or how there are multiple ways to find the next secret, some as fallbacks in case you lose an important item. Definitely a feel-good stage that felt snug in the Mario universe. It's Dangerous to Go Alone by Torellian or Cal. 
Here's one that takes the elements of Zelda and applies it into a Mario stage. I've seen a few Zelda levels, but this one feels just like you're in a dungeon, unsure of where to go next. The level is set up as different rooms with puzzles or secrets in each section. There's Link costume mushrooms all throughout the stage, which is nice to make sure you look like Link, but also very assuring in case you take some unwanted damage. There's good use of sound effects just to make it feel spooky enough, and it uses power-ups to its advantage, almost making it feel like a Metroidvania level. It's the right combination of adequate difficulty and exploration. You can almost hear the da na 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 as you solve a puzzle, and it feels good, man. It's even got secrets to everybody. So that's something. Spiny Suffocation by Aaron Hansen. Yes, that Aaron Hansen. So Aaron talks a lot about game design, but he put his money where his mouth is with this level. It's really good. You start by seeing your goal above you, but you can't reach it yet. So you go to the right and have to go through a small obstacle to get a spring. This is getting your feet wet into the theme and teaches you about something that will come later, but a bit harder. Going up with the spring will show you these Koopas topped with spinies. Again, showing you something that will come later. You hit a P-switch and it takes you down to a door that's right next to where your first obstacle was. I like that it loops back to old areas it makes the level feel cohesive and like it's a real place. Then the difficulty ramps up as you have to reach the mushroom before it falls into these spikes. Then damage boost through to the next room. The final challenge is increasingly taller stacks of Koopas and Spinies, until you jump as high as you possibly can to reach the end. It feels very satisfying to beat and really fun to play. The Forbidden Switch by Demalaxy or Tantru. This one was really cool and creative. At first you enter a spooky ghost house that's completely empty. It's eerie, but there aren't any enemies stopping you. Then you grab the P-switch at the end and you have to retrace your steps back out of the house. But now it's haunted and full of scary enemies as you try to escape. This is just a really neat concept. The house is exactly the same layout, but now it's run rampant with monsters. I'm sure they just recreated it a second time and you're running through a different part of the map, but it really feels fluid and like you triggered the apocalypse or something. It tells a story which is hard to do in Mario Maker, and makes you feel like Indiana Jones escaping from a temple of doom at the same time. Welcome to the Pow House by Franco. This is a level where the creativity that's possible in Mario Maker really shines. You utilize POW blocks all throughout the stage, but not for their normal use. Instead of destroying enemies in your way, you need to stack the blocks to reach certain pipes or doorways. There's only a certain amount of POW blocks in each room, and you need to use every one to reach the next area. It combines puzzles with player skill to create an extremely intriguing and memorable stage. You'll have to think fast, as there's lots of rooms to go through and the time limit can only go so high. The final room is just a perfect last test that makes you think fast and get that last POW block that you need. Major props for the cleverness in this one. I hope we see more ingenuity like this in the future. The Five Challenges by Cedric this might be my favorite level that people have sent me. It has incredible design as well as beautiful detail. As the title would suggest, you have to work your way through five different challenge rooms, and they increase in difficulty each time. A shell will launch below you, and you have to last the gauntlet until it releases a vine to escape. Before you enter the next challenge, it shows you what comes next by placing some enemies in a cutout in the wall. That's a really nice touch. Now the coolest part by far to me was the way they incorporated a checkpoint before there were checkpoints in the game yet. After you complete the third challenge, it tells you to go through this pipe. And if you do, it will bring you back to the beginning. And then it hits you. There was a pipe here all along, and I could have skipped the first few trials if only I knew. Well, now you do know, and if you die in the later challenges, you can just jump right back to them. So creative, and thinking outside the box before there were natural checkpoints in the game. It exudes polish and some really inventive ideas. Well there you have it, I hope you enjoyed these levels as much as I did. Thank you to everyone who sent me stages to try out. They were a blast to play and I was really impressed with the talent you showed. It made me feel like my levels were inadequate. I hope Mario Maker can be a tool for aspiring game designers, to learn ways to create fun, challenging, and intuitive stages for games they might make in the future. And as updates continue to be released, that Mario Maker can help inspire good game design for a long time to come. Go play some awesome levels yourself, and thanks for watching. Stay frosty, my friends. Hey, I'm Snowman. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. There's a lot more videos just like this on my channel. You can check out the Good Game Design series or some other countdowns. If you ever feel like helping contribute to the channel, you can support me on Patreon. And I can't thank my supporters enough. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye